everyone, and welcome back. My name is Kaylee Gray, and I'm super excited to have Pauline Wheeler back on. Now, Pauline and her husband, Tim, were on probably, it's probably been a year ago. I think so. Um, yeah. That we connected, and um, I have connected and collabed with them. Um, they have the W podcast, so I'm going to have all of that information below. So make sure you guys um, get connected with them because they are just equipping um, everyone in their dating season. And so it's just it's just awesome to have like connected with you. And um, I'm super excited, Pauline, today because we are going to talk about how to be just friends with a guy. Yeah. And it's not even possible. Right. Yeah, it's it's a it's a really important topic. So thank you for having me on, Kaylee. We get to have a little girl talk. Today. I know. It's so fun. <laughs> I love it. I love girl talk. Yeah. Um, okay, so my personal opinion, I do agree that you can be just friends with the opposite sex, but I don't think you can be best friends. Mm. But that is just my personal opinion. I don't know. Where do you stand on this? Yeah, I mean, initially, I always kind of just say, no, guys and girls can't be friends because I'm speaking to what kind of society or culture paints a picture of a friendship for us. You know, somebody that you can kind of rely on emotionally for everything, um, something that you can call at the drop of a hat and, you know, can kind of show up for you. Um, and the reason why I say that is because of just the emotional attachments. And in almost every relationship that I have seen, a guy-girl friendship, somebody ends up liking somebody else. Sometimes it takes six weeks. <laughs> Sometimes it takes six years. Um, you know, we all see it in movies where it's like, oh, I've loved you since we were in third grade. And you're like, what? Like, you're a brother to me. <laughs> yeah. Or vice versa. And nobody ever wants to be you know, the person who's in that seat of like, oh, I've loved this person for years and I just never could could share. Um, so that's why generally I say, no, they can't be friends because immediately people want, sometimes people want you to kind of sign off. Um, they'll look for anything or, or anyone to give them that quick yes for what they want. But sometimes we need to seek out friends and counsel to give us a no, you know, that challenges us. So I definitely agree with you that the I mean, guys and girls can be friends, but the, that's the beginning, not the end of the question. Yes, that's so good. And there, yeah, because there's so much to expand, expound on that. And I think a big thing is boundaries. Yeah. Okay, what do you have for us on boundaries with friendships? Yeah, that's that's such a good point. I mean, boundaries in all relationships, I really believe, um, are going to bring us the most production of just health and um, satisfaction in our relationships. Um, and friendships, of course, are no exception. I think really, you know, when it comes to guy-girl friendships, really we, the boundaries if the boundaries aren't there, that's where we start to see kind of things fall apart and like feelings get caught and feelings get hurt and there's confusion. Um, well, I thought you liked me. No, I, I only told you about all the girls that I liked because, you know, I thought that, that you would get the hint that I don't like you because of that, yeah. you know, it can get really confusing. We don't have boundaries. So I think that, um, you know, first we have to start with the purpose of the of that relationship, of that friendship. Um, maybe you have a friend at work um, that is of a opposite the opposite gender. And you're like, hey, we get along really well. We work in the same department. He helps me with my projects. I help him. And of course, I ask, you know, how his weekend's going? How you know the, that type of thing? And it's and it's healthy. But I don't go to lunch with him by myself, um, or I don't talk to him outside of work hours. <laughs> I know, like I had I've had plenty of guy coworkers who um, we were cool. We played big ping pong together in the office but I wasn't calling him on the weekends you know oh, we exactly. right so it's like kind of having those boundaries of like hey we're work friends <laughs> and like outside of work there's no <laughs> there's no friendship um so I think just remembering the purpose of that friendship and if you have to ask yourself like really asking yourself why like why are we friends um and if deep down you really want that person to become 
more than a friend, that, that's when you'll probably see when you're not honest with yourself, you start to see the boundaries loosen a little bit more and more. And then also reminding yourself too, like if this is truly a friend, then I'm gonna treat every other guy in my life the same way. Like if you're on the phone with a guy all day all night like three or four nights a week like and he's just a friend well how many other guy friends do you have are you also on the phone with them three or four nights a week like you have to ask yourself like are you giving this person special treatment and if you are why is it because deep down you really like them you hope that they like you because sometimes us women we can be kind of manipulative we're like we like the attention i used to be like that where it was like yeah i know this guy likes me I'm going to kind of soak it all up, soak up the attention. And that's obviously not godly <laughs> or kind or any of that stuff. So I think, you know, the boundaries really do, they should line up with, you know, how you're treating and the access that you give every other guy in your life that you call a friend. No, that's so good. And I love how you said, like, you kind of like at the beginning have to decide, okay, what is the purpose for this friendship? Like, why do I want to get to know and be friends with this person? And I know a lot of times when you're like wanting to maybe start date somebody, you do say, well, I just want to be friends with them, you know, to see, which is true. But I think there, there has to be that distinction. Like, are you treating him the same as all of your other guy friends? Yeah. And I know, um, you know, I've heard people say, well, I just get along better with guys, you know, like I can relate to them, you know, better and stuff like that. But personally, I don't think that's true. Like yeah. I, I think God made men and women and we think differently completely. And so, you know, you might be, it might be easier to talk to a guy, but, you know, I think um, just relationships are just so different. Like there are things that I can talk to my guy friends about, but there are things that I can't. And that's who I have to talk to, like my women mentors or like my girlfriends and things like that. And so yeah. um, I know we kind of talked about this, but like how they should look differently, like friendships, guy and girl friendships should look differently. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. They should, they should look different because they have different purposes. Right. And like, there's of course, um, there's this book that I read called, uh, Friendish and it's by a Christian author. I can't remember her name right now, unfortunately, <laughs> um, but it was a really good book. And she even talked about how there can be unhealth in, um, same sex, uh, friendships as well. Like not all friendships are healthy just because you're both girls or you're both guys. Yeah. Um, especially in today's culture there can be just be a lot of confusion amongst you know same-sex you know relationships and friendships and things turn and turn to go down a path that god didn't intend for them to go um and i think that you know when we kind of come back to just what's the purpose of friendship in general like sometimes when we grow up we're like oh well this is just you know somebody has the same favorite color as me and we look for commonalities you know in our friends and even back to your point about you know some women have this oh well, i'm a guy's girl i get along with guys like i don't get along with girls girls are too catty they're too gossipy they're too this they're too that yeah. and sure that can be true like that absolutely can be true but are you responding in the way that that god wants you to respond in those situations like you shouldn't just run from things because they're hard and um if you feel like girls are are they being catty or are they really challenging you and you don't like being confronted you know you have to kind of ask yourself like every girl that you've ever encountered cannot be the problem you know, like, it's just, it just can't be just a common denominator here. Um, and guys, a lot of times are easier to get along with, um, first women because guys, like, they keep things very surface level for the, for the most part. Like, it's easy to get along with them. If you see, like, a guys and girls hanging out, like, guys, when they meet for the first time, it's like, oh, what's up, bro? Like, I like your, I like, you like that team. I like that team too. They're best friends. And then girls, it's like, I have to kind of size you up. I don't really like the color of your earrings. Like, it's kind of this whole thing. Um, yeah, so we, it has to be, it definitely has to be different because different is is kind of like the rub of like the challenge that I, I really believe the Lord sometimes, you know, calls us to lean into. Um, and friends, you know, the Bible says that um, iron sharpens iron, you know, one man sharpens another, friends sharpen one another. And that's a really, really rigorous process of like friends leaning in and saying, hey, I noticed 
this? What's up with that? Tell me more about that. And a lot of times it's, as we get older, I feel like it's harder to find really good friends um, who are willing to not just keep you accountable, but uh, to celebrate you, but also, you know, to, of course, that accountability piece as well, and like just challenging you and we can run from that. And sometimes if we find ourselves more comfortable with the opposite sex, it's because for us women specifically, it's because we're like, well, I don't want those girls all up in my business. And it's like, well, I mean, let's let's talk more. You know, there's more there. And I'm not saying that, you know, there there isn't hurt that should be, you know, kind of addressed or forgiven or whatever the case is. Like, I'm not saying, you know, just kind of for, forget your trauma, but it's also like, don't don't run from from the pain of, um, you know, the relationships. And guys, for me, like kind of practical on the practical side, for me, what was really helpful was like, you know, group chats were really, really helpful for me um, before I was married and even in marriage now. Like if you have a big group of friends that you're like, oh yeah, I got like all these guys and all these girls, you know, you stay connected that way. Staying in public settings, I think really just staying off the phone, staying, like reducing the one-on-one -on -one interactions as much as possible is like really going to help you. And I know some people hear that and they think it's kind of like religious. So like, oh, well, I can't text my friend one-on-one. -on -one. I'm like, I'm not saying you can't but that shouldn't be your preference or your default is to have you know a, sometimes you have a lot of guy friends put them all in a group chat and like add your girlfriends too it's more efficient sometimes just to talk that way um but just you know the bible says to avoid the appearance of evil you don't ever want it to even look like you're trying to have this trail of guys like falling in love with you and you have broken hearts behind you like that's not that's not um the way that I wanted my reputation to be kind of like tainted in that way. And I think sometimes we think of everything is so private um, and, oh, well, it's just this one guy, it's just this one friend. And it's like, okay, but you also want to, you know, make sure, remind yourself that you're a leader in the kingdom of God, no matter what church you go to, whether it's a church of 10 people or 10,000 people, you know, just make sure you're protecting your reputation um, and treating your brothers well. Because some guys fall really hard for, you know, beautiful girls love God and if you give them that access to you especially also group chats are good for that too because they know okay she's not just texting me because if they're texting you one on one they're gonna think like oh dang like Kaylee's hitting me up 10 o'clock at night she likes me but versus if it's in a group chat they're like okay well this isn't personal this is just how she talks to everybody and um yeah it's better that way. <laughs> no, I think that's so good. And I think too, because at least for me, I know a lot of times, like if I, you know, I am friends with a bunch of like guys and girls and one of them starts dating somebody else, it's, they're not my person that I like talk to all the time. Like I, I like put the girl and the group text message now, you know? And so those are just, especially to them when they get married. Like yeah. there's just so many boundaries. Like um, two of like my really good guy friends got married and um, one, I didn't know their wives and I've gotten to know their wives. Like I've made an intention to get to know them. Yeah. I mean, like who wants their husband talking to some single girl? Like nobody. And so like I've made it an intention to like get to know them and to be friends with the wives and stuff like that. And so those are just like practical things that you have to do because I think a lot of people get kind of like butthurt and they are like upset. They're like, well, he's not talking to me anymore. He's not my right. friend anymore. And he shouldn't be like, he should not be talking to you because like he, his focus is his you know, fiance, his wife, his, you know, and things like that, his family. And so I think you just gave some like really practical ideas too, of just like the group texting. I know, you know, it's not as easy, like not everyone loves like group text messages and stuff like that, but it's really practical. It's something to do. Um, and I think too, is like the alone time. You talked about the alone time, like not just spending like one-on-one -on -one time alone and just being exclusive. I did, um, a, a video on um, friendationships where you're pretty much having a relationship, but without the commitment. And mm -hmm. so it looks like, you know, you are dating, you're doing everything a dating couple would do. And you're like filling that emotional void and, yeah. but you're not committing. And I think so many times we do that with our guy friends or guys can do that with our girlfriends. And it's right. not that we mean to, and then we intentionally do it. It's just, 
that's what we long for. Like that's what we desire, you know? And so, um, you know, it, it, yeah, exactly. And so, um, I think boundaries, um, setting like the purpose of like what this is and something you two like we had talked about was like our weaknesses do you want to i know we kind of touched a little bit on that but i think knowing your weaknesses are so important yeah and even before that i love what you said about um your relationships your friendships with your guy friends who are married because i think that there's so much wisdom there and i just want to like emphasize that for everybody listening because i think a lot of times like i've talked to some of my single friends and they're like okay well you know i don't believe in the group chat thing like me and you know my guy guy friend are good and they are like they absolutely are um and it's not even a matter of uh of like kind of sin entering or feeling something hurt but what you said is long-term wisdom because if your guy friend ends up marrying somebody or getting serious with a girl you don't want to become a threat to her because if she doesn't know you it's over like you have to like when she comes into the picture it has to be I'm making friends with her in order to stay friends with him because yeah. if you put yourself in that shoe just like you just said like yeah I don't care I don't care how long you guys are friends I'm here now like <laughs> it's it's about me it's about us and like I'm the keeper the protector of this home and like that's honestly one of the a sign of um and health and that a girl does like you is if she's not willing to be friends with a guy's girlfriend or his wife um because she sees her as a threat so i think that that is just so wise that you you know you're so intentional with that and it's a great point but um yeah to the weaknesses <laughs> to the weaknesses yeah i definitely think it's important for us to know what our weaknesses are so i mean i think one of the biggest just downfalls of us Christians these days is uh, just like a lack of self-awareness. Like, of course you need to know um, your Bible, know Jesus, know um, things that he says about you and just what he, how he thinks and how he works in general. But obviously, you know, God is limitless. We're never going to know probably even like a pinky's worth of everything he's thinking and doing. Um, and not to say that you should not seek him, you should always. But I think one of the most beautiful things is like when we get to know our creator, we do get to know ourselves. Um, but then as you're getting to know the Lord, you know, the Bible says that um, God's kindness is what leads us to repentance. So as we get to know more and more of God and know his love and his character, we honestly recognize more and more sin and more faults and more weaknesses within ourselves. And that does show up in our friendships. And again, back to the whole, like, don't run from pain and don't run from hurt. I think a lot of that, um, you know, it does show up and it has merit in our friendships. And I think that, like, a lot of times when friendships end, or transition, whatever you want to call it, we just kind of are like, okay, well, that was that was fun while it lasted, like kind of on to the next. And sometimes that's healthy, but I think we need to take more autopsy reports and like kind of like review, like hmm, what 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 went wrong. Like, sure, maybe they were like not a good friend, but also like why did I pick them as a friend? Like, what was the fault in me that I was attracted to that person um, in that way? Or maybe they just, you know, served their purpose for that time while you were in college or while you worked at that job. And then like, you know, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that like highlighting our weaknesses and like do those autopsy reports and saying like, hmm, okay, I did do this wrong. Um, you know, she was trying to have a, a, a conversation with me about, you know, a mistake that I made and I ran away and I didn't really, you know, end that well, or I know this the friendship changed at this point or at that point. Um, and then allowing those weaknesses to, to, to kind of guide us and how we set up our boundaries, especially with the opposite sex. So in your past, if you had relationships with the opposite sex that did either like you ended up liking them and they didn't like you back <laughs> or I'm not laughing I'm I, it's sad because nobody wants you know to be oh, but it's, ha it, it's happened like right, it happens to all of us like I feel mm -hmm. like 
I don't know. And it doesn't have to be your best friend or just a guy that was in your in your circle, in your community. Um, you know, just really asking yourself about, you know, kind of what, what went wrong there. Um, and maybe you let your guard down too early or whatever the case is. Um, but yeah, just being, you know, kind of being aware of that. Like, if you are somebody who has a trail of broken hearts, you know, behind you, like, notice calling that, like, hey, I need, maybe I need to change. Because I don't just say, oh, you're just so beautiful. And, you know, you're, you're the only single person around and that's why and maybe that's the case but also you can be the only single person and have boundaries and not let guys get so close that they feel like you're their wife like if you have constantly guys walking up to you saying oh well then god you know is the one god told me that you're my wife and it's like okay like sometimes that they are like random strangers and there's nothing you can do about that but sometimes it's like oh my gosh every time you know six it seems like six months into a friendship we're having this conversation <laughs> like yeah. what is it with me so i think that sometimes you know even just kind of diving into your past and even like going back to your family of origin and um your relationship with your dad and your parents and all of those like kind of mucky stuff that we don't want to kind of like go into because the enemy absolutely will use you know friendships with the opposite sex to make you think um that's how you're going to survive through singleness is you know oh okay. you know your husband is coming but until then like here's a counterfeit and you know here's how you get your emotional fix and here's how you get you know this person to tell you that you're beautiful and kind of get that male attention until that time comes instead of allowing the lord to fill that void and even allowing you to build your own confidence that's one thing that i've i've learned in the past couple of years is like i need to tell myself that i'm beautiful i need to tell myself that i'm smart that i have i need to know what my skills are for my from for me <laughs> you know i don't need you know an, another person telling me that i need to believe in myself um so yeah, I just think that, you know, kind of taking those autopsy reports, doing those reviews whenever you do have a transition in your life, it doesn't have to be like, you know, a friendship ends, but even just like whenever you start a new job or you move or just kind of like, I know some people do it at the top of the year, you know, with like New Year's resolutions and things like that. Just kind of reviewing your year and like, how did how did my friendships go? Um, and specifically, you know, obviously with this topic, like talking about your friendships with the opposite sex, like you can absolutely learn from your guy friends and have meaningful relationships with them and still have boundaries and still not have like this one-on-one -on -one private intimate conversation with them like it's it's definitely possible and I think that vision is a big part of it as well and like knowing that like okay my friendships the vision that I have or the idea of friendships can't come from movies or come from culture it needs to come from biblical godly you know examples um and being able to find those and obviously like if you don't have them in your community um being intentional about finding them online and even like listening to videos like this and like you know just seeking it out and, and and for those who are listening like you're already doing a great job by even listening to this because a lot of people don't even do that but i think just challenging yourself um and getting that vision for whatever your weaknesses are but first you have to be able to you know it's like when you go to the doctor you don't just go up and say doctor what's wrong with me they're gonna say hey what's been hurting you what's been bothering you you know what's kind of your normal temperature or your normal kind of your normal gauge and if you're like oh i have no idea i just wake up in the morning and, and leave and they're like you don't know your body you don't know what hurts you but if that is you it's probably because you are numb um and you know so if you don't have any pain or any kind of like issues with relationships of the opposite sex or or friendships with the opposite sex um you know there's there's probably more to explore there too yeah no man that is so good there i'm i mean i'll be the first to say i have not done you know friendships with guys perfectly you know um <laughs> you know trial and error that i've learned over the years and you know i wouldn't say heartbreak but you know definitely i feel like maybe years wasted where i was like okay like that really wasn't what i thought um the end of this friendship was gonna be yeah. and so i think um I think definitely like doing an autopsy. I love that analogy um, of yourself and just really figuring out the relationships, but finding the purpose, setting the boundaries. What are your weaknesses? 
and just putting these practical things in order because I think it's fine. I think it's totally fine to be friends with guys. Like I get so much great advice from them. I'm like, hey, yeah. like this guy did this. And they're like, Haley, no, like he's not interested in you. Like don't waste right. your time on that. Like, you know, you deserve something better. And I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> stuff. So, you know, I am thankful for those um those male voices in my life, but the ones that I go to for like the deep, super deep counsel are my girlfriends are the ones of the same sex. And so, um, I think this is kind of like a hard topic to talk about because I'm like, hopefully if, if you get, if I get any hate, you know, don't hate Pauline, hate me, you know, oh, no. <laughs> because, but I think it's so important, um, just to be building in your single season, to go into your dating season. And so, um, I was super excited that Pauline was going to talk about this topic with me. Do you have anything to share before we end? Um, I think we said said it all. I think it's, I know. I think we don't did. Don't be afraid. I think that's what I would just say. Just don't be afraid. Whether you have leaned away from relationships with friendships with the opposite sex, or you lean too much into them, just don't be afraid. Um, perfect love casts out fear. So lean into God's perfect love and ask yourself the hard questions. Ah. Uh. So good. I love this vlog. Thank you so much, Pauline, for being Thanks on. Thanks for having me. This has been so great. Be sure to subscribe and follow me on my other social media. And I'll be sure to have Pauline and Tim's um, information for the W Podcast so that you can stay connected with them too. And hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Bye.